821 here on the air. We're experiencing very strong shaking. Wow. I think we need to get under the desk. All right, we're going to go to break. Uh, we'll, we'll be, be right, right back, back we'll after be right this. Back. Wow. The Great San Francisco Earthquake, which occurred on April 18th, 1906, and triggered the most disastrous event in California history, a rupture in the soil spanning 296 miles, is the reason the San Andreas is the stuff of nightmares. Stretching over 800 miles from Cape Mendocino, 200 miles north of San Francisco to the Salton Sea, a shallow saltwater lake approximately 120 miles east of San Diego, the vast San Andreas Fault Zone marks the border between the Pacific and North American tectonic plates. The monster has now reared up and is prepared to strike, serving as a frightening reminder that California may soon experience a massive earthquake that is far more destructive than any previous one. When is the big one going to happen? If California is struck by a massive earthquake, what would happen? Join us as we explore how a big earthquake at San Andreas is overdue and what will happen when it cracks. Seismologists are still worried that the San Andreas Fault will eventually trigger a massive earthquake. The fault is the border section between two massive tectonic plates under the surface of the Earth. It stretches for more than 800 miles through California, past San Francisco and nearly as far south as San Diego. Since these plates are not moving around much, they can tolerate huge pressure builds up over a long period. And when they shift, it can cause major seismic waves. The fault continues to cause concern as multiple segments appear to be significantly under a lot of stress. The fault appears locked, loaded and ready to go. Although the movement of the Pacific plate is more rapid than that of the other plate along the fault, both are heading north. As a result, the pressure builds up. Among the worst natural disasters that California has ever seen was the 1906 Great San Francisco earthquake. Incredibly, California, the most populated state in the United States, and its economy continue to thrive despite the numerous earthquakes that have struck the area that makes up the state. Naturally, they do their best to enforce building rules that make structures resistant to earthquakes, given that they are aware that earthquakes have occurred and will occur in the future. Buildings still get damaged and people still get killed, even with that. Of all the earthquakes that have struck California, one has been responsible for more casualties and property damage than any other in the state's recorded history. The fact that no one was ready for it was the worst part, but subsequent modifications to safety protocols and building codes helped lower the death toll from earthquakes. So, with this being said, let us delve further into the Great San Francisco earthquake of April 18th, 1906, which resulted in a massive loss of people and extensive property damage and devastation. Having building codes that enabled structures to endure the forces of the earthquake and safety protocols, wherein individuals knew where to seek refuge in the event that it occurred, likely could have prevented or at least mitigated the impact of this catastrophe, which is ranked among the worst natural disasters in the United States, likely ranking alongside the 1900 hurricane that struck Galveston, Texas and the 2005 Hurricane Katrina that devastated New Orleans. Unfortunately, they didn't. The San Andreas Fault, the primary fault line responsible for all earthquakes in California, was thought to have been two miles offshore when this quake occurred. The experts have attempted educated guesses as to the magnitude of the earthquake, and the typical answer is that it was between 7.9 to 8.0 on the magnitude scale, even though they didn't have the same system in place as we do now. Running in a north-northwest or south-southeast direction, the San Andreas Fault separates the Pacific and North American plates. It begins inland, south of San Francisco, and includes the Salinas Valley. From there, it continues northwards into the ocean, just south of San Francisco, and then continues northwards from there. The fact that the city is located right next to the fault line means that it really is important to have building codes that allow for the structures to remain intact when earthquakes do occur. Along the area of the San Andreas fault line, there was massive ground displacement, 
with the maximum slide reaching depths of 26 feet north of San Francisco in Marin County, near the Point Reyes National Seashore. The displacement was minimal, measuring around 9 to 12 feet near San Francisco Bay, compared to other locations along this significant fault line that were close to the earthquake. This is why geologists for a long time assumed that the Marin County fault line was the epicenter of the earthquake. Geologists from the illustrious United States Geological Survey later determined that the epicenter was located two miles offshore from Daly City, a San Francisco neighborhood to the south. This earthquake was felt, particularly in areas close to the fault line, for a distance of hundreds of miles, as far south as Los Angeles, as far north as Oregon, and as far inland as Nevada. A chain reaction of unfavorable events intensified the property damage and human casualties, as is typical with natural disasters. The bulk of Hurricane Katrina's 2005 devastation was due to levee failure, which led to widespread flooding in New Orleans. Similarly, the Great San Francisco earthquake of 1906 was mostly caused by flooded rivers and streams rather than the hurricane itself. The city suffered some destruction with buildings damaged and lives lost. Nevertheless, this property damage was quite minimal in comparison to the massive fires that eventually spread out of control, obliterating a significant chunk of the city. The initial sparks for the fires came from gas mains bursting, which in turn set off around 30 fires in different parts of the city. However, this could have been reduced if not for human mistakes and intentional attempts to start more fires. The city's fire mains were rendered inoperable after the earthquake. Houses that were dynamited to act as fire breaks ended up igniting more fires, and some residents deliberately set fire to their properties, knowing that their insurance would only cover fire damage and not earthquake damage. Tent towns and other temporary housing facilities sprung up all around the city, and many individuals, up to 60% of the population of little over 400,000, ended up homeless as a result of the destruction of so many homes. Some of these people stayed in these places for years. In addition to the obvious effects on the insurance sector and the rest of the world's financial infrastructure, this massive earthquake had unexpected, unintended implications. Many insurance companies went bankrupt due to the large sums of money paid out in claims, while some managed to pay out every single one. Some economists attribute the panic of 1907 to the increase in interest rates brought on by the financial system's strain from the insurance industry's massive expenditure demands. There was property damage worth more than $400 million. Additionally, it caused changes in insurance laws, establishing a standard where earthquakes were not mentioned in fire clauses of insurance policies. This meant that if earthquakes were to recur, the insurance company would be liable for paying for fire damage, effectively passing the cost of potential disasters on to their customers. A further effect of this tragedy is the enormous interest in discovering what makes earthquakes tick, where they are most likely to strike, and how to prevent them. The fault line that caused the 1906 San Francisco earthquake continued to run just west of Los Angeles for a few years after the disaster. This discovery allowed for future earthquake preparation in the area, so it never experienced the same devastation as San Francisco. The longest earthquake to strike the Los Angeles area since then, with 115 casualties, was the Long Beach earthquake of 1933. A more accurate method of detecting earthquake magnitudes was one of the innovations prompted by this finding in the field of seismology. This earthquake has other repercussions beyond those already stated. After the devastation of San Francisco, the Western United States' most populous cities, industries and businesses relocated southward, eventually giving rise to the Greater Los Angeles area, the greatest metropolitan area in the West even today. Carmel, on the coast of the Monterey Peninsula, was chosen as the new site by the art community after the earthquake. To summarize, the Great San Francisco earthquake of 1906 was triggered by stresses and pressures within the San Andreas fault line. It resulted in massive damage and loss of life, mostly through indirect means. 
The earthquake had numerous consequences, such as short-lived changes to building codes and insurance laws, the rise of Los Angeles as another Western city, advancements in earthquake science and so on. No one pays attention to or fails to respond to major catastrophic occurrences like this one and public policy and understanding are both impacted. Nearly half of San Francisco's population was rendered homeless by the earthquake and subsequent devastating fires, which claimed the lives of over 3,000 individuals. It destroyed 28,000 buildings and caused the equivalent of more than $11 billion in today's dollars in monetary losses. The southern region of San Andreas has not seen a major earthquake since the 7.9 Fort Tejon earthquake on January 9, 1857 and the northern region has remained relatively peaceful since then, despite the fact that it had the capacity to do enormous destruction. As a result, many are concerned that a disastrous earthquake is imminent along the San Andreas Fault in California. When and where is anyone's guess? An earthquake of 6.7 or greater magnitude is likely to strike the San Francisco Bay region by 2043 according to the 2014 Working Group on California Earthquake Probabilities. However, the northern part of the San Andreas only has a 22% chance of experiencing such a quake. Near Los Angeles, in the southern San Andreas region, scientists predicted a 19% probability of an earthquake of magnitude 6.7 or higher. Those figures shouldn't bring you much comfort though, because earthquake prediction isn't an exact science. According to John Vidal, a former head of the Southern California Earthquake Center and Dean's Professor of Earth Sciences at the University of Southern California, there are many damaging earthquakes possible on the San Andreas Fault System. While the big ones are unavoidable on the time scale of centuries, many other scenarios would do great damage with magnitudes as low as M6 to M7. Specifically, Numerous communities in the Los Angeles and Bay Area regions are situated immediately on somewhat active faults, the names of which are still a mystery to many. All the faults in the Bay Area and Los Angeles are within the San Andreas Fault System. Napa in 2014, Northridge in 1994, Loma Prieta in 1989, and San Fernando in 1971 are just four examples of such events. The San Andreas Fault System is significantly more complex than that, despite popular belief. Multiple parallel fault strands moving at varying speeds make up the San Andreas Fault System. The San Andreas, San Jacinto and Elsinore Faults are the primary tectonic features of Southern California. The Hayward Calaveras Fault System, the San Andreas and the Greenville and Green Valley Faults to the east are the most hazardous in Northern California. For those who have seen the 2015 suspense film San Andreas, the question of how likely it is that the entire fault may be shaken by a sequence of tremendous earthquakes is likely on their minds. In the film, the fault causes a magnitude 9.0 earthquake and destroys most of San Francisco and Los Angeles. A tsunami is subsequently caused by the earthquake. There will be no earthquake larger than 8.0 on this fault, according to USGS forecasts. A 7.8 magnitude earthquake rupturing a 200-mile stretch along the southernmost part of the fault was the most likely scenario, according to a 2008 federal analysis. It's basically moving the ground several yards over an area of 50 square miles. Therefore, the power of an earthquake of 7.8 on the Richter scale is likely comparable to the power consumed by the entire state for a year. Basically, something that we as a civilization have trouble creating, sort of like a nuclear explosion. If you are near the epicenter of the earthquake, it will be nearly impossible to stand. Lots of people in earthquakes end up with broken legs or having run through glass, so it's bad that people think it's a good idea to bolt from their buildings or out of bed. We always tell people to duck, cover and hold. And that's exactly what to do. Hide beneath a table or chair. Be careful to shield your head and chest from harm. Structures may crumble during and right after the tremors. Quite a few structures were erected prior to 1980, 
and the majority of these structures are extremely susceptible to destruction or collapse because the San Andreas will cause long period shaking that is extremely harmful to particularly tall buildings like those in Century City, Long Beach, downtown Los Angeles, and elsewhere. When it comes to older steel buildings, the connections may not have been optimized to endure the most extreme stresses that can be applied. Even code compliant buildings are not immune to collapse. Unreinforced structures are even less robust. A building's continued usability following an earthquake is not guaranteed by the building code's minimal standards. It is not meant to do harm. There's an assumption that everything should be fine if it's new, code designed and earthquake proof. But that's not always the case. 10 more skyscrapers will be marked as red tagged, meaning they are not safe to enter and five of them could fall entirely. Since an earthquake must shift the ocean floor in order to set off a tsunami, and since the majority of the San Andreas is located on land, an earthquake along this fault line would produce small waves, but not enough to do any serious damage maybe. Roughly 1,800 people could perish in the earthquake and another 50,000 could get injuries. Although fires would cause the greatest number of casualties, falling debris and collapsing buildings also pose a threat. Earthquakes have traditionally posed the greatest risk of fire. As was mentioned earlier, a wave of fire engulfed the city in the 1906 earthquake, killing 3,000 or 4,000 people. Damage to infrastructure and the economy will result from the major event's aftermath. Below our streets and our buildings is this really intricate network of infrastructure that could be damaged and a lot of the things we take for granted every day won't be available anymore, right? Like water, electricity, and being able to drive where you need to drive. There are 39 oil and gas pipelines that cross the San Andreas Fault. This has the potential to burst high pressure gas lines, which might cause explosive gas leaks and explosions. So, fires and explosions can occur when natural gas lines burst. After the fires have died down, getting clean water becomes a top priority in the aftermath of a devastating earthquake. The San Andreas Fault crosses several important aqueduct networks that supply water to Southern California. Any damage to these networks could have devastating consequences. In that case, the conduits that bring in water from outside the area would be severed. They go under the ground and over aqueducts close to the surface we would lose 60% of our water supply if all of these were to burst. As a result of the proximity of many water distribution lines to broken sewer lines, pollutants may be entering the water supply. Throughout Ventura and Western Los Angeles County, landslides are imminent due to earth shaking and shifting sediments. Thousands of landslides may occur. Thousands have been created by earthquakes. Losses of life and property can result from landslides. The hill country is home to a large population, right? So that's the location where you would be likely to see landslides affecting people. Last but not least, the economy will be hit hard by the big one. The inaccessibility of major transportation networks, such as highways and trains, may persist for several weeks, if not months. The aftermath of an earthquake can render certain bridges impassable. In the past, earthquakes have caused bridges to fall. There might be catastrophic long-term effects for the area if important industries start to depart and people start to leave as well. With $33 billion in building damages and $50 billion in missed economic activity, the big one is estimated to have cost a stunning $200 billion. Although this is predicated on the worst case scenario, it does sound terrible. Many unknown elements determine the actual damage from a large earthquake. Furthermore, there is cause for grave concern for minor earthquakes that occur on faults directly beneath large population areas. However, it is difficult to forecast the most destructive earthquakes. You know, the nuclear power plant in Japan broke down in 2011, which was nearly solely responsible for their expense. It's challenging to foresee which components may collapse during a major earthquake. It is believed that earthquakes in the northern part of California don't correlate with those in the southern part of the state. Ruptures as long as 
248.6 miles could occur in any one segment. Very rarely does an earthquake have the potential to travel across longer sections of fault, potentially shattering both simultaneously. Parkfield and San Juan Bautista are believed to be separated by the creeping stretch of fault. It should be noted that there are other fault systems in California that can produce large earthquakes, not limited to the San Andreas Fault Zone. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.